Mercury has been used in dentistry for hundreds of years for two reasons. One is it's cheap and two is once it's placed with other metals and in what's called an amalgam and put in a tooth, it lasts for years and years. The disadvantages to mercury are this. It's considered the second most toxic element on the planet, only behind plutonium. It's so difficult for me to imagine why would we, how could we ever in medicine or dentistry use something with that toxicity and put it into someone's body. I have the largest exposure that you will ever have to mercury is from your fillings. You get a 24-7 exposure from the mercury filling. That continues to leak the vapor out of the filling for the life of the restoration. If you want to induce an autoimmune disease in, an, in a laboratory animal, you do it via mercury. If you want to depress an animal in the laboratory, you do it with mercury. Mercury stifles our immune system. There's, there are very few elements, maybe plutonium only, that would have the impact on our health that mercury does. Every day, a physician, a biochemist, a health practitioner sends their patients here asking us to remove those because of the challenges to their immune system. When we remove mercury, we follow a very strict protocol that has them on vitamin C, IV. We also drape every tooth in what's called a rubber dam so that none of the little particulate from the filling material uh, goes down their throat. In addition, we use copious amounts of water spray to virtually drench the mercury vapor that comes off the filling when it's removed. And we have what are called negative ion generators in every treatment room, which not only blow over uh, the patient, but blow over the dentist and the staff to push that down to the very foot of the chair that the patient's sitting in. And there we have a, actually a, a mercury collector. So all of those things are part of the protocol that we use when we're removing mercury. 